What's good, y'all? And welcome to my review for The Lost City. Just got back from the theater. And you guys know, if you guys follow me on Twitter, that there is something different about this day because I am recording this, and this review will most likely be going up on Friday. Because it's still, because it's pretty late, and I still got some homework I gotta get done. Um, where I'm watching this, where I'm recording this on a Thursday, which you guys know I never do. When I watch movies, especially when I'm at school, I'm watching them on like Saturday, or Friday or Sunday, depending if I got if I got something to review that particular, like Hirawaka, for example. I usually watch my movies on Saturday, if not Sundays or Fridays. I never go on Thursday because I have my walks or the you know, class and everything. I mean, my my classes are usually done by the point that the screenings happen at the minor uh, Thursdays, but I'm just like, yeah, I'd rather just wait until like Saturday or Friday to watch. But but because the Lost City is only was only being screened out for. Thursday, that's usually a sign of the movies most likely on the ways out, and I'm like, there's a good chance Rich Chris is my, the Rich Chris cinema isn't, isn't gonna be screening it anymore by the time I get back home, so I'm like, fuck it, I'll just watch it here, because I was interested in the movie, but I was, but I was, uh, but I never wanted to, go, and also I wanted, I was also had to be a little more picky uh, about what movies I had to see, because, you know, especially now we're getting near the end of the semester and everything, you know, I gotta use whatever my mom, money my mom gets me to go to the theater, sparing all the movies that I'm actually super excited about. Movies that I'm kind of interested in, I gotta come up for, like, something like The Batman or something, you know. But, you know, I got this one, I'm probably also gonna be reviewing every uh, everything, ed anywhere, all at once, or whatever the movie's called for May 24. That, me, the Rich Chris is going to be screening that one, so I have to watch that one here if I want to catch it in the theater. The Northman, although that one I'm interested in, that one you got, that one I watch uh, when I get back home, along with most likely Sonic 2. I might pirate it still, but I'm definitely going to be watching it there if it's still playing, regardless, because I want to support the movie, because I'm pretty sure it'll be good. So, I might pirate it next week, just so I can watch, finally watch it, see what the post credit scene is all about. Who knows, maybe Shadow appears, I don't fucking know. But, and, and just see what's up with that, and be, you know, and see where that is, and then when I get back, I'll watch it again, just to support them when I get back. I don't know, whatever the case may be, that's what I'm planning about. So yeah, everything and every, everywhere is probably the last one I'm going to be reviewing while I'm here, and then, of course, you got Dr. Strange, that's what I'm reviewing when I get back home, and as well as Northman, a couple of the ones. Ambulance, I'm mostly going to have to wait until it comes out on Blu-ray to watch, because uh, Bridge Cinema is done after today. I checked the app, and they're like, and they were screening it tomorrow, so I'm like, fuck, this is it? Come on, man. I was hoping, I was actually looking forward to watching that one when I got back home, but it looks like I'll have to watch it when I when I when on the when it comes out on Blu-ray. Maybe, uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. Anyway, guys, with all that being said, me rambling, give you guys a schedule. Let's move on to the movie itself and tell my own and my thoughts about it. So, first off, I gotta say, this movie is fucking awesome. Like, yo, this movie was very was a very pleasant surprise for me. Because when I saw the trailer and I saw the poster when I was at the Rich Chris Cinema before I went back to went back to school back to like January when I was watching Scream and a couple other movies, I was like, huh. Looks good, looks funny, that should be interesting. But I was like, even then, I was like, I'll most likely wait to catch this one out on Blu-ray. And then the minor got it, which I was shocked they got this one out of all the movies. Um, like I said, I was like, so I was like, yeah, hey, you know, like I said, gotta be a bit more picky about what movies I watch when I'm here. So I was like, yeah, but then I'm like, but now, I'm like, yeah, fucking why not? <laughs> Just watch it now. And yo, this movie's awesome, man. Like I said, it's a, it was actually a really pleasant surprise to me. I ended up watching, loving this movie, a way more, enjoying this movie, way more than I originally thought I was gonna, because this movie's hilarious, man, and I had a, and I had a grand time throughout the entire time it was, throughout the entire time. Which also, I was actually kind of surprised, because I was expecting, because of how long this movie's been out, that I was gonna have to theater all to myself. I actually did. There was like another like I think five people that were there as well, which is surprising because I was like, because I thought I was going to be from a uh, theater to myself because how long this movie's been out for and it's not like fucking the Batman or something. <laughs> One other funny story before we get into the actual review. Sorry, I've been going off on tangents here, but um, uh, <laughs> this week is actually when the Humboldt International Film Festival is going on. It's this thing that it's going on with the school and everything. Uh, that was going on. Actually, uh, so the guy that was working at like, the table where they had like all the uh, like uh, print, like I also prep going on the film fest was one of my classmates <laughs> in my film in my like in my film two class, and we did lock eyes. I said, you know, hey, what's up? Mostly just out of habit, you know, just uh, just out of just our reflexes. And I get up and I wonder, and I wonder what his thoughts were when he heard that I was here, a film student, not here to go catch the film festival, but I'm here to see the fucking Lost City. <laughs> Because <laughs> I can only imagine, he was like, this motherfucker is a film student, 
And instead of going to the goddamn film festival, this motherfucker's gonna go catch the lost city! The lost fucking city! Are you sick? Are you mad? <laughs> You'll imagine that's what he did. Probably wasn't, because to be fair, none of my class would come off as art house snobs. Which is also the reason why I'm not, which I'm not, I didn't go to the festival at all, because film festivals are art house central. You guys know I'm not an art house guy. So, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I'm sure the movies are good, but yeah, that's not, that shit ain't my forte, man. Y'all know me. But anyway, with all of that out of the way, and my rambling about, let's get on to the actual movie itself. So, the movie is directed by Aaron Nee and Adam Nee. And star Sandra Bullock, Channing Tatum, Brad Pitt, my man, Daniel motherfucking Radcliffe, Harry Potter himself. Funny I watched this movie the week after I see Fantastic Beasts. <laughs> Oscar Newell, Patty Harrison, and many more. And the plot of, of Lost City is reclusive Ar Arthur uh, Lortia Sage writes in her, about erotic places in her, in her popular eventual novels that feature the handsome cover model, Alan. So... Uh, first off, I gotta say the cast is awesome. Sandra Bullock, which you guys, I think I might have mentioned this in my review uh, for Ocean's Eleven, but Sandra Bullock will always have a special place in my heart because growing up, she was like my favorite actress. I love the Miss Congeliality movies and a bunch of the movies she was in. The Blind uh, the Blind Spot was another one that I also loved as a kid. I just loved her movies. And she was like one of the first, and she and Will Smith were like the first two actors. I actually made a point to remember their names. And I'd be like, oh, hey, it's the guy from... Shark Tales or whatever, you know? So, Sandra Bullock will always have a special place in my heart because of her, because of how much I loved her movies when I was growing up, man. Jack Tatum, he's awesome, man. He was funny as hell. Brad Pitt and, and Daniel Radcliffe are probably the highlights of the movie for me. Daniel Radcliffe is mentioned because this is the first movie I've seen of him, uh, with a movie of his I've seen since Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two over a decade ago, which was back in 2011. Christ, I'm old! <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it was nice to find see movies him him again. And actually, funny uh, next day on my Twitter, I tweeted out like when I made my review, someone that had like a Daniel Radcliffe like like a profile picture in his name with like Daniel Radcliffe Germany or something said, oh if you like him then watch his other movies. Which to be fair, I probably should because I loved him in the Harry Potter movies, and I'm curious to see what his art house arc was like. It was similar to Robert Pattinson, who you know also went to art house movies to, to, to distance himself from the Twilight movies. So who knows? If any of you guys know any of, of Daniel Radcliffe's movies that he did. Uh, post Harry Potter that you guys think I should check out. Definitely recommend leave your recommendation down in the comments below. I would love to check him out because I'm curious to see what else he's done in the more art house sphere and see if he's like see how his movies compared to Robert Pattinson's art house movies. Still need to watch a good time though. But anyway, so he was awesome, man. I love Brad Pitt. He was amazing, man. And the entire cast I thought was uh, amazing as well, man. They all gave great performances. The comedy in the movie is absolutely fucking great, man. I was laughing my ass throughout the entire movie. Especially uh, there was this one uh, joke around the end of the movie when uh, Chatting Tatum is chasing after uh, Sandra, uh, Sandra Bullock and on like this mopike. And that one, that one had me in tears, man. I was like, legit, I legit fell off my goddamn seat. I was laughing so hard, man. So that one was good. There was a lot of other com comedic moments that I love, man. Um, so that was great, man. Daniel Radcliffe, like I said, was like fucking amazing. And every time he was on screen, man, to Brad Pitt, same thing. And the handful of times we got to see him. Uh, I really dug the chemistry between uh, Sandra Bullock and Chet Tim. I thought they worked really, really good together. Uh, the movie, I also got to say, is shockingly well directed, man. I thought, like, I was surprised how good this movie looks. Like, there was, like, this one really good shot where, like, the, uh, I, I forget if this shot was in the show, so it probably was, where when Daniel Radcliffe meets up with Sandra Bullock and she get, brings her in. Oh, yeah, there's also a couple Taken references. That I also thought were pretty fun because I love the Taken movies. So we're after she like tells him, we're after she tells him about like, yo, you need to translate this thing. And then like the gates behind him open up and a plane comes in there. Man, that shot looked fucking up. I mean, I'm sure it was green screen most likely, but either way, it looked fucking cool. So that one looked cool. There were so many other really great shots in here, really man. So that was really good. Uh, I already mentioned how great the comedy was. Like I said, Brad Pitt was awesome as well. Dan Radcliffe and Sandra Bullock. All of them were amazing, man. Uh, another thing I got to say that, was, that, that surprised me is that this movie got away with a PG-13 rating, which I'm kind of surprised by because this movie kind of gets a little graphic. Like, first off, there's a massive blood splatter uh, one, in one part of the movie. I won't get into spoilers, but that happened. I was like, Jesus Christ, you can show as much blood in PG-13 now? And then another time is because we straight up see Channing Tatum's ass for a good solid minute. <laughs> and I'm like, how the hell did this avoid an R rating? Because I feel like this was, this, was, this was enough for the MPA to slap that R rating on, but I don't know. Maybe because they didn't say the fuck once, that's what that would save them, man. I don't know. But 
that was great, man. And I like the overall arcs that both um, uh, Angela and Dash, or um, Adam, excuse me, uh, Alan, excuse me, um, they went through as the movie progressed. I thought their chemistry and their relation, how it, it um, it progresses, the movie goes on, and how and I and how they're just character stars overall. And I like that this movie kind of just is like a massive parody of like those romance, like borderline porn books that you know women that are in their thirties but they're acting like horny teenagers are, which we do see in the movie where girls are like, oh, take out your shirt during like the book, uh, during like the book launch or whatever. So that was per that that whole stuff when they're making fun of that whole stuff was pretty funny, man. Um, in terms of like flaws I have with the movie, there's really only two. One, Brad Pitt is in the is barely in the movie, man. Like, I was so I was so annoyed that when he when he was written off the movie, I was like, come on, man, like, cause he was like my favorite character, man. I mean, it's Brad Pitt. There's no what's there not to like about Brad Pitt, but he was like he was like the best part of the movie outside of like Daniel Radcliffe, man. I was sad that he didn't get that he wasn't in the movie more than he was because it was fucking awesome, man. Uh, another thing that I thought was weird is that during the ending. For some reason, like the last ten minutes of the last five ten minutes of the movie, uh, Channing Tatum's hair changes. Like he, like he has like a like a slight like this top of his hair is kind of point up like the Miz used to do back in like the early to twenty tens. And for all my WWE fans out there, but then in like the last ten minutes of the movie, for some reason his head is shaven, and it's like never explained or anything. And I'm like, why is his hair different? Because then, because, because, and then, and then in the post credit scene or the mid credit scene, which yes, there is a mid credit scene, it's fucking hilarious, um, that his hair is back to how it was in the rest of the movie. So was this done in reshoots or something? Why does his hair look completely different in here, man? Like, massive continuity error, man. So I don't know what that was all about. I assume it was the scene, this was done in reshoots. I assume it was, because I don't know why else his hair would be completely different from the rest of the movie in this one, in this, like, this one scene, but... That, but yeah, that was probably the only thing I had like a big issue with was just uh, those was just like those two things, especially his hair. I was like, I was just scratching my head, like, why is his head suddenly shaven now? <laughs> you know, like I said, like, I assume it was done in research or something, man. But yeah, but yeah, man, I highly when you guys check the movie, check out the Lost City if you guys haven't already. If it is still screening in your local theater, definitely check it out, man. It is it's it's a hilarious comedy, man, and I think you'll be thoroughly entertained by it, man. So overall, my final verdict for the Lost City is going to be a 9.5 out of 10, guys. So as all and so anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe if you're new, follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you like at least ask your boss below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.